Welcome to Spot On Sports, where we're not just accurate, but we're spot on. This is the new wave of sports. I am Wayne Galloway. With me, as always, my associate, my teammate, my partner, Abdul. Welcome back. What do you do? Know, once again, we ain't see Abdul in a while. The great Absolutely. Abdul. Absolutely, man. Ready to come back and get y'all a show today, baby. So get ready, okay? <laughs> Everybody, happy September. It is the first of the month. Hope everybody stay safe, stay strong, blessed. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe on YouTube, our Instagram and Twitter, which is at Spot on Sports on our Instagram and Twitter, and on YouTube is at Spot on Sports as well. So, Abdul, you know, sports been shaking up lately. Everything's been going all over the place. Summer is coming to an end, so things are starting to fall. Like I did that. I, don't know, I think that sounded <laughs> good. But Beautiful. everything is starting to... That was that was good. I like that. I love that. But we're just gonna jump right into it. I'm so sad. X ain't here. You know the Patriots fan, the lover, the Cam lover, the LeBron lover. But we're not gonna jump to LeBron because you. I forgot you're a LeBron lover as well. But how do you feel about Cam Newton getting released, and what is your reason why he got released by the Patriots, and now Mac Jones is the starter? To be honest, my feelings on that situation was. It's about damn time okay, <laughs> that Cam got that they released them. It's it's funny because they only signed the man for a year deal. They needed a quarterback at the time just for that season, you know, so they gave the man an opportunity. But the fact of the matter is they like the young kid. That's why they drafted the young kid. Mm. Okay, Nobody even expect Mac, Mac Jones to go where he went. You know, they didn't expect him to get drafted by the Patriots. You know what I mean? But the Patriots pulled the plug on that. And I don't blame him. You know, he's looking good. Don't get me wrong. It was only preseason. Preseason doesn't mean much, but the man's looking good. You know what I mean? But, you know, um, Cam's been done for a while now. You know, he's not the same scrambler he once was. You know, the thing about scrambling quarterbacks, it's almost like a a basketball player, how Jordan dunks on people, LeBron dunks on people. You can't do that all your career if you want to be successful and you want to last long. Okay, that's true. Eventually, you have to develop a jumper. You feel me? And that's there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. Take some pressure off of your legs. Shoot the ball. You know what I mean? So. When it comes to Cam, he's not the same runner he once was. He was never a great thrower, even though he's always been average or above. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. He's not a bad thrower either. Let me get that saying. He is not a bad thrower. But has his throwing got to the point where it it overshadows his running game and he doesn't need to run or do options? Not a running overshadow the throwing. Exactly. So the Cam used to be able to get downfield more often based off his legs. That's not the case anymore. He's not the passer that Mac Jones probably will be because Mac Jones looks like a passing son of a gun. You know what I mean? So I, you know, and Cam was a, you know, like I said, he's predominantly a rushing quarterback, you know, but his throwing has not got to the level where it needs to be. Okay. I agree. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is my turn now? I could I could jump in. I That's got it. a lot to say. I'm I'm gonna keep I'm gonna try to make it short, but this is to all the Patriots fans out there, especially my people at home, because they are a Patriots fan and Xavier that's in Tampa. Down there with Tom Brady now, former Patriots. But uh I told you so. I knew it was gonna happen. I said it when they drafted him. Like you said, I didn't expect him to get him. But as the draft started to get closer and closer to the Patriots pick, I was like, you know what? Patriots never took a quarterback. But if they do, he going, he, he got to start. He's going to play. That's the number one pick. Every number one pick is going to play. Regardless, you every number one pick is going to play. And I told people, like, I think it's set up for Cam not to even play. Because, one, outside looking in when you see Cam getting released. First of all, I just want to say this. Cam is not a bad quarterback. I don't hate Cam. I respect Cam and I like Cam. But him coming to New England last year, looking at it, he didn't get enough opportunities. He didn't have the weapons around him. Sweet. That's fair. That's fair. 
Still did what he can. They had some close games they lost. He did okay. Coming to this year, you're like, okay, Cam got a – they signed all these free agents for Cam. They brought him back. We're going to see what he can do. But then as Mac Jones started playing and coming in, and you started thinking, like, can Belichick survive with Cam doing the whole season? I remind you, last year they benched him in the middle of the season last year. When, like two games or one game. Yep. I, I think they won. They just this year, and then with all the vaccinations going on, like I said, from the outside looking in, I thought it was a race thing, but it wasn't. I thought it was about the vaccine, but it wasn't. I had to really think how Belichick think, which nobody probably understands his mindset or, or Robert Kraft's mindset, so what they want for the team. And I felt like they didn't really want Cam. They just, like, they brung him in. They didn't want to bench him because they know he didn't want to be benched. But they felt like Mac Jones was ready, and they see the potential. And, like, we got to let him – we got to let him beat – let him out, let him lose. Oh, yeah, the team, I think yeah. – the quarterback coaches and the team seen it. They probably like the Mac Jones better, but, you know, they, they ain't going to talk to the media, or they're not going to say it out loud. But Belichick seen what he's seen. He was like, you know what, I'm pulling the plug. I'm taking my chances with a rookie quarterback. First time since probably Brady when Drew Blesso got hurt, but not – how this is an actual fresh start from a draft pick. And he trusts them. And, you know, he had to do what he had to do. Now, Cam, on the other hand, he already getting offers from, I heard, Houston and Cowboys. I think Jerry Jones low-key won him. Sorry, Tony and the rest of the spot on sports crew, but if Dak get hurt, he's done. Dak is done. Dak, Jerry Jones ain't spending no more money on him. And he's going he's gonna to be considered injury prone, considered to the NFL. And he already talking to Cam. That's going to be a walk in the park. But that's if Jerry Jones do that. I can see it'll be a pretty good fit for Cam. He got receivers. That's a pretty decent team to the Patriots. You know, you know the Patriots are better than the Cowboys. But then the Texas. Houston ain't the best option. But you replace Deshaun Watson, who is a scrambler like Cam. No racist thing. He's black. You know, maybe fit the scheme. Houston no. is not a bad place for Cam. So. Right. Right, but don't I feel me... like oh my bad, my bad. Oh, you go ahead, no, go ahead. No, uh, because I mean, you know, Cam's not uh, Deshaun Watson's a little faster and a little younger, you know what I mean? Yeah, that too. You you know, so Cam he, his legs aren't the same anymore, you know. They're just not the same, bro. You know, um, it, it's like don't get me wrong, for for the argument's sake, yes, that was the Patriots suck last year, they didn't have any pieces that was his mm. first. His first stint. When you're brand new to a team and you have to master yeah. the playbook, those things aren't easy. You know what I mean? So Cam did have a lot against him last season. Okay, mm-hmm. but it's a reason Carolina got rid of him. You know what I mean? If yeah. Cam Cam was that great, you don't get rid of guys like Cam Newton unless you truthfully feel Man, he was an MVP, former MVP, and just went to the Super Bowl. My point. Put it this way: Matt Stafford just got traded from the Detroit Lions. Matt Stafford never went to the Super Bowl. Matt Stafford never uh, uh, won a season MVP. But Mm -hmm. Carolina, but he just got traded. And Matt Stafford has been in the league longer than Cam, about a season or two, you know? So now it's it's just so. But now all of a sudden Carolina trades Cam. They don't feel as strongly about him anymore. You know what I mean? And honestly, is he a starting quarterback? It's going to be for the last couple teams of the league. Nobody's special. You know what I mean? But I will mm-hmm. say Cam is still better than most second stringers. Okay? Of course. Let me say that right Some now. Some starters, too, I can, I can slightly say, you know. Exactly. If you got Cam as your backup, like I said, I'll give him about five, maybe ten teams he could possibly start on. You know, you know, possibly. You know, if you have Cam as your backup, you are in great position, okay? Even if he isn't the Cam Newton he used to be. But go ahead, bro. I just had to butt in right there. Hey, absolutely. NFL stands for not for long, and that's what they trying to do to Cam. He ain't got that much time, and they are. Um, now we're going to go from football to step in the ring into boxing, uh, which is slightly being taken over by a YouTuber and named Jake Paul and Logan Paul. Not physically, but, like, financially, they're raising the numbers and – making money and getting fighters paid and getting themselves paid. How do you feel about the Woodley and Jake Paul fight that I felt was terrible? 
man, honestly, I haven't seen any of Jake Paul's fights and I don't plan on seeing them, my man, because they're a waste of time. <laughs> okay. Honestly, you know, until he fights. Oh, by the way, I didn't, I, I get them for free, but. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> You know, you know, man, the, guy, the guy's overrated. You know, he hasn't seen a real boxer. You know, he would would have been dope with him, but there's not a, there's not as much money in boxing as there is in UFC. I mean, vice versa. Mm-hmm. There's more money in boxing than UFC. But if he would have whooped the UFC fighters, you know what, in the octagon, now that would have been impressive. But you know what, he didn't do that. You know what he did was he. I do feel like it's all scripted. But until he sees somebody like Gervonta, I want him to see Gervonta. I want him to see Canelo. He's around those weight classes, I believe. I'm not sure how much he weighs, but he looks like he weighs it in the 150s, 160s, you know, maybe more. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't looked too closely at the guy, but that's what he looks like to me. So, <laughs> uh, congrats that they're making money. They're, it, they're doing it for a reason, you know. But mm. to call Jake Paul an elite boxer, absolutely not, my man. Go ahead. <laughs> I agree with you, y'all. Uh, long, like you said, as long as he makes money, keep him satisfied, and also he helps other people getting paid, which is I think everybody want a fair amount of money or something they want to do. Um, call him elite boxers. That's what the announcers and stuff do to hype this up. I don't know why they do that. But you know, y'all. I know that's your job, but don't don't make it like he is a lead boxer. He's not fighting nobody. No disrespect to them, but look at their boxing record and look at what they actually do record. They don't box. So he's not fighting a box. Like you said, fighting tank, I think he should. He he talks a lot. When they yes. call him out back, though, he don't respond. He want to talk trash when they get in the fight or afterwards. And then when you bring up Canelo, it just made me think. We just going to get over this. I think, you know, it was rigged to Willie. Should have went and killed more when he had him on the ropes. I don't know why he stood there and why. Then he won a rematch. But I don't think you deserve it. You did it for money. It looked in my eyes. And now you want a rematch to fight him for real. No, nah, man. It's too late for that. I want to give you a rematch either. Now you look like a clown. You look like yeah. a clown now. Yeah. With money. You just you're like a clown. Basically. The great Woodley, whatever, you know. But when you bring up Canelo, now think about it. Canelo got a big fight coming up against Khalid Plant. An upcoming young boxer who's undefeated. I think that's going to be a great fight. You think so? But I think Canelo going to win. I, I told you. that I think Canelo going to win that, though. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. Most likely. Don't get me wrong. Canelo's bound to lose someday. The thing is, I don't know when. <laughs> Ever since that Floyd. You know what I mean? He lost, like, and then he lost young. So now he getting older. He like, exactly. I didn't fought the best at that age. I'm not losing to none of y'all. You know, so Triple G, the only one that really gave him a, a bad, but now he out of there. Right, right. You know, and you know, both of those fights were good fights. You know, mm-hmm. it was Triple G, you know, so interesting fights because Triple G was whooping people, you know. What? Yes. Triple yes. G was white, whooping people down the line. Yes, yes. You know, he wasn't running from, he wasn't ducking from nothing. He wanted everybody. Uh, nah. Nah, Triple G, those Canelo fights, but it just go to show you how good of a boxer Canelo is to triumph the greatness and the attack of a Gennady Golovkin. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know, Triple G was just, you know, he was a lot. He was, he was a lot, you know, like his offensive attack was just it. You know, he was coming at you, jabs, mm-hmm. combinations. Meanwhile, Canelo was a counter puncher. You know, you know, so ducking and dodging, counter punching. It was just, it made the scene for a great fight. Yeah. Nation, you know what I mean? So that's just how I feel about that, really. Um, but also, man, the uh, man, honestly, Canelo's not going to waste his time. That was really just a joke. <laughs> yeah, Canelo's not going to waste his time against uh, Jake Paul. Let's just be All honest. Right, so what you... What you think about Wild and Fury Part Three, which is now uh, finally coming up since he won a postpone for COVID that he so called had? Right, my man. I'm gonna tell you right now. The first fight, I bet money on Wilder, not researching Fury. Fury's. I found out about Fury a little later. I was like, oh my god, I made a mistake. Okay. <laughs> Luckily for me, even though I bet money, 
the mm. first fight was a draw. So I didn't lose Baby. my yeah. But guess what? Guess what? I thought Wilder lost for sure. That was just my opinion. So I would, if it was up to me, I would have lost. I would have took my own money that night. Like, nope, you lost, <laughs> boy. You know? So the fact that Wilder knocked him down twice does not triumph the fact that Fury won 75% of those rounds. You get what I'm saying? Fury won the most of the fight. So the fact that they gave Wilder the um the up, the, 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 the tie for him to keep his title. I don't think that was right. So I think we should have seen the rematch already. You know what I mean? Which was the mm. second fight. Wilder got his, you know what, handed to him. <laughs> <laughs> On pay-per-view, my brother, for the world to see, you know? So if he, Wilder has something to prove. Fury ain't got nothing to prove. You know, Wilder has to come out and win this fight impressively. The thing is, can Wilder beat Fury on rounds? Fury is a round type of boxer. He will knock you out, but he doesn't have the power of Wilder. Wilder is a knock you out kind of boxer. He won't win the rounds, but he will knock you out. You know, so when it comes to these two, honestly, bro, I honestly feel like this third fight, I've seen everything I need to see, you mm -hmm. know, um, if why I'm pulling for Wilder, but I wouldn't bet money on Wilder. If you're going to bet money on this fight, ladies and gentlemen, you bet on Tyson Fury. Okay. <laughs> okay. Period. That's, okay. Okay. Period. So I think we will be making a bet that day because I'm going to have to go with Wilder. I just don't, it's something about, it's just something about the third, the third town. It's, it feel like Apollo Creed and Rocky. You know, or I feel like Mr. T and, and Rocky, you know, Fury remind me of Mr. T how arrogant and cocky he is. Like, come on, my boy, come on. If it, it, it give me that type of feeling, I'm a big Rocky fan. Or it could, it's not really like Dolph London, but it's really like Mr. T and, and Rocky. And I feel like Wilder just, he felt the embarrassment. He he learned from it. He humbled because he, he was cocky the first two fights too, and he felt it so. And he got humbled and he realized, like, listen, I ain't what I thought I was. I know I got to work on this. He made some excuses. You know, he made, you know, the uniform, the equipment he had on. But he had to deal with it. And then he had to sit and wait through COVID and all this time to build it up. Let it sink in. I think it's just great. Get, it's Ray all on release on Fury. And we know Fury the same old Fury as we seen in the press conference. Same old Fury. He like, ain't nothing going to change. Uh, buddy, I think you 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 took this long break for a reason, just to get really mentally right, because you know he, it's a different ball game third time around. You know, there's always three strikes or three bases for a reason. First, second, and then it's the third strike before you make it home. But you got I got Wilder, first, baby. Wilder ain't even hit the ball. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, as far as I'm, I concerned. feel like I feel like he got him right now. I'm, I'm confident to bet you that day. I, I feel like it's gonna happen. Okay, all right, all right, brother. Joshua, they make like he the big dog, but he ain't the big dog either. The way Joshua too. I that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I know. Just, I want. I like both, but I just feel like Wilder's gonna win. I want Fury can win too, but I feel like when it comes down to the D three, who's gonna be the king of the king for heavyweight? It may be Wilder. And you I know he got heat that wow. but the odds against him too. <laughs> you would say Wilder, the one with no title right now. <laughs> The ball, <laughs> Fury and and uh, it's either gonna be what I don't know. I can't really say right now. I don't know. I, I'm going Wilder to win a fight. That's what I'm gonna say. Wilder gonna win a fight in my eyes. Right, right. But now yeah. we go ahead. No, honestly, bro, I want to see Joshua Wilder. I want to see that they have to give the people what they need to see. You get what I'm saying? You know what they want to see. You know what I mean? So I the American see, versus the Britain. Yes. You know, just like I want to see Joshua versus Fury. We need to see that because, and I'm going to be honest, after this third fight, if Wilder lose, don't ever bring up Wilder Fury. <laughs> because that'll be three strikes. Th yeah. Three that's, that's it. Like I said, that's it. Okay. And like I said, I don't give a damn about his two knockdowns. That wasn't enough for me to give him the first fight. Okay. You got to knock him out where he doesn't get up okay yes so <laughs> just just have to throw that in there yeah. <laughs> yes 
So we're going to step out the ring now, and now we're going to go on the court. As the NBA season is approaching as well, because you know their time is short, and they got a long season ahead of them. The new rookies in the league, everybody's back healthy. Some trade. The latest one was Rondo going back to the Lakers. Reuniting. I think he's going to be a bench player because, of course, Westbrook is starting. How you feel about that? Man, that's great. That's everything the Los Angeles Lakers need. What more do you need, ladies and gentlemen, than Rajon Rondo coming off your bench, running the second unit? Okay? That's what you need from that franchise. Okay? That's what you need from a player like Rajon Rondo. You know, the LA Lakers seem to make the best moves, man. I'm telling you, that's one franchise that knows how to do it. They do make some good moves. You know what I mean? Through just throughout the generations. You know what I mean? They know how to get good players. You know, some of the greats of the game. Honestly, about five, five of the greatest players to ever play. Five of the 20th, 20 top 20 have played on the Lakers. You get what I'm saying? Kobe, Kareem, Shaq, LeBron, Magic. That's five of the top 20 players to ever play basketball. Yeah, that's great. That's all played. Probably, well, you probably miss Will Chat. I don't know Will. Oh, oh, oh. Will <laughs> Will I say you forgot Will. Thank, thank you. Thank you. And Will was first and foremost, the first out of this list. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, bro, that's six out of the top 20, bro, that played for this franchise, man. Rondo, this, is a, this was a great move. Trust me, the second unit, anytime you got a player like Rajon Rondo coming off the bench, points will be scored. He's only became a better scorer throughout the years. Rondo was not a good scorer, in, in my opinion. In today's world, he can shoot a three ball now. You know, Rondo, Rondo didn't shoot threes 12 years ago, 10 years ago. Rondo wasn't trying to shoot threes. Man, me knowing Rondo early, he was just a sis, 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 sis. Yes. Yes, he barely even shot mid-range jumpers. He used to be scared like Ben Simmons, you know, because he knew he couldn't shoot like that. Now he's become a much better shooter than than those days, you know. So mm -hmm. great move for the Los Angeles Lakers on this championship run, ladies and gentlemen. Uh -huh. The 2022 NBA champions, barring injury. <laughs> I know. I can't say nothing wrong about this move because I'm a Rondo fan, so I think it was a great move. It just basically, like you said, locked John spot in for a, a title run. I mean, y'all was—I think y'all had a chance anyway, but it just—that's like now it's like that's it. Like we on the road now. The only way stopping us is we beat ourselves. That's the only way I see the Lakers do. They beat themselves. Brooklyn, maybe you know that come across. Not enough to me. No other team, but they the two, the two powerhouses right now in the NBA. And the Lakers, they making us, they proving like we we stacking for like what's up? Y'all want the yeah, score? Yeah. We want it. Huh? I already can't know. Wait. I can't <laughs> wait. I can't wait because now all that Brooklyn talk, how they were stacked. Now we stack two, baby. So let's <laughs> dance. You know, because let me tell uh, you, what people ain't talking about Rondo and Melo in that second unit. Oh, <laughs> you put that into perspective. One of the best assist men to ever play basketball. Rondo, to me, is a top 10 passer, in my opinion, to yeah. ever play basketball. Okay. Melo is a top 10 scorer, just about. I think, or he number 11 or 12. He, about, he, he, he could crack it. He could crack it. He about to. He about to. He about to. So, you got Rondo and you got Melo in your second unit. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> then you got Dwight Howard helping on the defensive and rebound side of things. You got everything you need, even in the second unit. You feel me? Don't get Don't me wrong. They, they could fill it out with one more, uh, uh, like uh, some shooters, some shooters that can defend. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. honestly, this has to be a ch it's championship or bust. No excuses. You feel me? Unless, like I said, injuries. But I'm here to tell you, this team is so good. Even if AD or Bron get hurt, I think they still might have a chance if one of them get hurt. Yes, I said it. Yeah, Melo and Westbrook got some chemistry from OKC. My point. They got Westbrook now. Exactly. They got Westbrook now. 
Westbrook, you add Melo, you got Rondo off the um, – listen, even if AD get hurt, because you never know what you're going to get out of AD, even Bron been getting hurt lately, you know? But AD most likely, if anybody going to get hurt, is going to be Anthony Davis, okay? Yeah, he always do. You know, now they have enough to – where if that situation were to occur, it would not be an issue. Okay. Whew, great. I can't wait for all this to all this sports to happen. This is it's a lot right now. It's gonna I think that's gonna be a good year for football, basketball. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be real good. But thank y'all for tuning in. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe on our YouTube and Twitter, which is at spot underscore sports and our YouTube and um Instagram and Twitter. As well, this is the new wave of sports. Spot on, where we're not just accurate, but we're spot on. I am Wayne, my co worker, associate, partner in crime, Abdul. That man, with me as always, with the take. Thank y'all.